Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking about Vanda orchids. One of you suggested that I make a video talking a little bit about my potted Vandas, how things are going, and actually do have some stuff to tell you about that, do have some things to show you. I will touch upon the transition from bare root to potted. Vandas sadly have that reputation that you really need to keep them bare rooted, otherwise they will not do good. And that's not true, but I do believe there are some things that are important for you to know. I want to give you my observations. We're also gonna look at a new acquisition, which you can see the root system here. She is enormous, but she's a beautiful Vanda, very tricky. It's a little bit of a challenge, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna manage her. And yeah, just have a vendacious day today. So if you end up enjoying this video, do give it a thumbs up. It helps it in the algorithm apparently. And hey, why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week, all sorts of plant content, not only orchids. So yeah, very often video tutorials and vlogs and all of those fun stuff, right? So with that said, let us start with the potted vandas. Alrighty, so first off, let me just start off by saying that if you're new to orchids or new to vandas, you've never grown vandas but would like to know more about them, obviously I do have a tutorial for beginners. It's linked down below in the description. You can check it out at some point if you want to. But for those of you who are pretty seasoned with vanda orchids, you know that most of the times they are sold bare root, meaning they're not potted. Their roots are contained in a tiny little basket. They have that hanger. I'm gonna show you with the big one. It's, it's exactly like that. They don't come with a pot and medium. And historically, articles which talk about Vandas usually mention that you should keep them bare rooted, either in a basket of sorts, either no basket, just with their roots dangling in the air. And for nurseries, this is a convenient way to grow them as well, since these are the types of orchids that produce super large roots. In comparison, size-wise, if you put them together with a Phalaenopsis, the same size orchids will produce very different sized roots. Vandas will always, always have the thickest roots, the longest roots, the most robust roots. So putting them in pots implies using typically bigger pots than a Phalaenopsis would. And I'm choosing Phalaenopsis because it's a very popular orchid. Not to mention Oncidiums and Cattleyas, which have even thinner roots. These guys, oh no, they take the cake when it comes to root size. <laughs> so I can see how it's efficient for nurseries as well to keep them bare rooted. They just sprinkle some water twice a day maybe on them, depending on the humidity level. It's a thing, it, it's a tr not a trend, but it's a type of culture that just got propagated throughout the years. When I started collecting orchids and I learned about Vandas, I learned that I should never try to pot them, but keep them bare rooted, whether dangling <laughs> in the air or even in a container, let's say a vase. Some nurseries do sell them in vases, but the important thing is to have no medium around, to have a lot of ventilation, to just water them separately and then display them in that device or just hang them. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not the only culture you can give to these orchids. Yay, because, oh boy, there's just so many curtain rods that I have on the south side of my greenhouse. But there are some things you need to know because yes, after a few years of growing my Vanda's potted, after many years of growing them bare rooted in a way or another, which failed in this climate because it's very, very hot, I have thoughts, I have opinions that I want to share with you because there's, there's a catch, there, there's something you really should know about these orchids. So even though I do find that growing them in normal pots is absolutely doable. It is not a no-no. They are actually very similar to, let's say, Phalaenopsis conditions. They like a lot, a lot of air and they like some moisture here as well. I will have to agree that between the two, these guys need more air than Phalaenopsis and will generally fuss a little bit more if you mess up the combination of the potting medium. This does not mean you cannot use sphagnum moss, I do, but I live in a very, very hot climate. However, I would be very, very, very cautious with making too much of a fine potting mix. Making a sort of a statistics of all of these years and all of these orchids that I grew, Vandas are the most fussy, in my opinion, from the point of view of their root requirements. They're the most epiphytic of them all. That, that's totally wrong what I just said, but I'm emphasizing my idea. These guys love air. And if there's one thing that older articles say is that Vandas 
love air, love air more than water. And I will have to agree. I would definitely not try to play around too much with trying and adjusting the roots of a Vanda to anything because it's just not gonna adjust. So that leads me to the next topic. How did I get the Vandas that I have to grow in pots and thrive in pots? Well, it wasn't that easy. First of all, as some of you might already know from my other videos, whenever we try to adjust or acclimate the roots from a type of potting mix to a very, very, very different one, there is a very, very high chance that some of the roots, if not most of the roots, will just not adjust. If a root is adjusted to growing in sphagnum moss and being kept moist pretty much at all times, that exact same root which grew to adapt to that environment will kind of fizzle off if we pot it in pure bark in very, very airy conditions. Practically, if we don't offer the same amount of moisture and air, there is a very high chance that the older roots will just not adapt, they will die off. The newer roots that grow in this potting mix, they will adapt. This works across the board with any orchid, with Vandas as well. Within limits, of course, there is a limit. We're not gonna try to adjust a pure terrestrial orchid to living mounted, right? So sensible movements here. If we want to adjust an orchid from sphagnum moss, which worked in an environment, let's say, to bark and sphagnum moss, which works in our environment, again, we might face that root shock, lack of adaptability from the older roots and so on and so forth. Well, with Vandas, imagine that times 10, <laughs> something like that. The proportion of Vanda roots that will not adapt is much higher than any other orchid that I've ever had to adapt and go through this uh, repotting or transplant shock. There are two factors why that is. First of all, most if not all Vandas are sold bare-rooted, which means all of their roots are adapted to air. There is not one single root adapted to being potted, not one. Hence, all of them risk not adapting to the pots, which happened quite a few times with me in adjusting them to pots. Second, the love of the Vanda for air. So the first problem that I faced with my Vanda adaptation journey is the fact that all of the roots were aerial and that the Vanda herself is a little bit more reluctant to adapt since it loves air so, so much. But Transitioning work. Ooh, oh, you're wet, honey. You're wet, oh no. I watered my orchids yesterday. But transition is possible. And I do think I have a video from a few years ago where I talk about how I transition them. It's still the way that I do it. I initially pot the orchid in a temporary pot, a temporary setup. And then one month or so after, I go back in and see which roots didn't make it. And most roots don't make it. It's a little nerve-wracking in the end. I know that 99% of these orchids do adapt, but do I want to put them through this for my own benefit? Yes, because it's in their own benefit as well. <laughs> if I have enough time and energy to water them, they will be hydrated, right? <laughs> and in the end, most of them do adapt. But it's not an easy thing to watch, let me tell you that. And overall, it takes a few years for an orchid to completely be adapted to the pot. And it will not stay in the pot like a Phalaenopsis maybe would, even though Phalaenopsis tend to spread their roots as well. These guys tend to spread their roots even more. Let me just find you an example. There we go. There are roots in the pot and they do hydrate the orchid, but these roots, they're never gonna go in the pot. <laughs> they're way too far from the medium and they do have the tendency to just go out, to go everywhere, more so than Phalaenopsis orchids, in my opinion. Some of the roots, though, they will grow in the pot. I have a few that actually even circle the pot very, very nicely. But again, this leads me to my next idea. What was that laughter? My next idea is not all Vendacious orchids adapt to the same or grow the same. There are some factors that will influence this adaptation, which I think you should know. First is the genus and second is the age. So let's talk about those. Within this group of Vendacious orchids, we can have several genera, such as the actual Vanda, Rhynchostylus, Aridus, Ascocentrum, um, what are you? <laughs> I forgot the name. Renanthera, I don't know if I mentioned it. So there are a whole bunch of very different orchids that are all Vendacious, they're not all called Vandas. Well, in my experience, it is much, much, much easier to acclimate 
Renantheras, first and foremost, they take the top. They're the easiest to acclimate to being potted. Sometimes nurseries even sell them potted, which is great because we have more roots being adjusted to living with some sort of media and moisture levels around the roots. So that is great. I've never had issues with potting Renantheras or keeping them potted. There are bigger Renantheras than this. There are also hybrids. The hybrids, again, they seem to be a little bit more easy to acclimate. Also, things such as a Ritas and Rinko Stylus, again, very, very easy. You are a Pereirara, which is a combination between, between, <laughs> between a Ritas and Rinko Stylus. And we also have the Rinko Stylus themselves, the Gigantias. I have a whole bunch of them because they're differently colored. Never had any issues adjusting any Rinko Stylus. Ascocentrums seem to work the same way for me. There are some former Neophoenicia hybrids, which again have no issues being grown potted. With these guys, I find that the transition is really not all that bad. It looks a little bit like a Phalaenopsis transition. You will get some dead roots, but definitely not all of them, and your roots just grow and adapt, and yeah, the orchid looks fabulous in a pot. But there are some that don't really work that way, such as the actual Vandas. And yes, it is absolutely possible with Vandas as well. This is a Vanda Merrilli. She grew so big, I got her a tiny seedling. There is something else at play here. But generally speaking, making again a sort of a statistics, I had a little bit more issue adjusting a proper Vanda rather than a Rinko Stylus or an Aeridus or things of the sorts. There are some other factors that are at play here that can help. We're gonna get to them. Bottom line, it is just my observation that some of these genera are a little bit different. I would say that Vandas, proper Vandas, and especially the ones that grow very big, they have more of a love for this airy environment than the tinier Vandas. And kind of that makes sense as far as I know. Some of these Vandas do come from slightly more humid areas. It doesn't necessarily mean it's cooler or anything, it just means it rains a little bit more. While some of these Vandas do come from areas which are kind of dry. So again, especially with the species, there is a bit of a difference and it depends on the geographical location of each and every species, their natural habitat. However, there is another factor that helped this particular orchid and that is age. I find that the younger the Vanda, the better it will adapt. And again, that makes a lot of sense. When they're seedlings, you guys know they're propagated in that very nutritious medium. It's based on agar and other things. Yes, their roots are absolutely adjusted to being surrounded by a medium of sorts. Even when you deflast them, most of them are grown in a type of medium before they are grown bare-rooted. So the younger they are, the more chances we have that some of those roots are adjusted to being surrounded by a lot of humidity. Also, a younger orchid, no matter the genus, a younger orchid does need more humidity and more water rather than air since it doesn't have so many storage structures. Even though, yes, pandas don't have pseudobulbs, which are like the epitome of storing nutrients and water, they do store water as well, particularly in their roots, but also in their foliage. So the younger the orchid, the more need for that constant moisture and babying pretty much. They're not yet as robust and resilient as the adults. So it makes sense that the younger the Vanda, the better it will adapt to a pot. And I wouldn't say seedling size. I got these orchids when they were pretty tiny, but definitely not seedlings. They were already a few years old. Definitely not barely deflast. I did find that acclimating them, no matter the genus, even if it's Vanda or Aeridas, is much, much easier than trying to acclimate a big fella or girl like this. And this is one that I purchased locally. All of these Vandas that come at this size that you find in flower shops, all of them are bare-rooted. At least in my area, in the European Union, all of them are bare-rooted. At most, put in glasses of sorts, but it's still bare-rooted. It's not actually making much of a difference. There's not a lot of medium to retain that moisture, even though they are put in containers. So acclimating something like this is tricky. It's really, really tricky. Do we see any roots at the top here? No, we see some very poor looking roots. I assure you, there are some roots inside because this Vanda is kind of hydrated, although could be a little more, but it's a newer acquisition, this one. So adapting something like this, which is already mature, already old, already having roots adapted to air, 
is tricky business and sometimes you kind of have second thoughts especially if you're a beginner especially if you're like oh i saw this miss Market girl person on the internet doing it i can do it too because it's possible no there's always the risk and it's so easy to be put off by seeing all of those words just die off uh so that's why i'm making this video to let you guys know it's gonna happen if you really want to pot your vanda the older the vanda the more likely it is that you're gonna lose all of the roots. Luckily, again, 99% of the Vandas that I acclimated did make it. They produce new roots. Let me just show you one, right? Okay, this is another one that I purchased locally, but before that red one. I actually don't know what this is. A little side thing here. I used a marker which is very sensitive to UV, and I'm gonna show you. These big markers, oh no, 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 no don't use on tags they're gonna fade and i had the unlucky surprise of having multiple vandas just becoming nameless i know them by their appearance that they're flower shop vandas i don't know exactly what they are sally but <laughs> luckily this one has a little flower spike here so i'm gonna find out what i can tell you is that this pentel pen this one does not fade. This is one of the best pens that I've had. I had it for five years at this point. It's still writing, it's still going, because I only use it for tags. But uh, I don't recommend these guys. If you know Sun, we'll see the tags. I think it's Sun, I don't think it's the water, but these faded so badly, so disappointing. This one worked great, not sponsored, um, just something I threw in there. So <laughs> we don't know what this is because it faded. Right, so this one, does look much much better and already acclimated you can see i have a lot of so-called aerial roots still all of them will do that but inside the pot i do have roots as well they're circling they're going in there the orchid is hydrated it acclimated eventually but it used to look like the other one for a while and it was nerve-wracking but in the end it did it will it acclimate all of the time i don't know it's always a gamble. Whether you wanna take that gamble or not, you know, it's up to you. I am taking the gamble, as you can see, always. But I want to warn you, it is a bit of a gamble, especially with Vandas of this size. Here's another orchid that acclimated very, very well with partially <laughs> missing tag, but I have another tag here. This is a Vanda Coltana Gold Cross with Ascacenda Coltana White Will. I purchased this online, never saw it bloom, so yeah i'm really curious to see this one acclimated super fast actually i got it last year i believe and it's already absolutely fine but the story will not be the same with all of them and i did have one that i purchased locally that did not make it like at all i think that was my only loss but it is absolutely possible so you have to know these things before you go ahead and pot everything to pots uh, the reason why I pot them is because it's much, much easier for me to keep them hydrated and to grow them. And eventually they do adjust. And you can see on the internet other people doing the same thing. Don't be fooled by the ones that looked like you just purchased them. They have a lot of flowers and they're potted into these very unusual styles of pots. That's exactly what it is. An orchid that was just purchased, potted in this sort of arrangement with all sorts of stuff on top for decoration. Take the picture and that's it. It actually didn't grow like that. This is how it looks like when it grows for a little while in a pot situation. It is possible. It is, however, risky, much more risky than other orchids. And that's kind of the final idea to wrap up this topic. Now, let me show you the beautiful princess that I found at the flower shop. And I decided, yeah, um, I don't have time for anything anymore nowadays, but I'm gonna take on another challenge because why not? <laughs> Look at her. Now, if you don't have any reference, let me show you exactly how tall this girl is. Ta-da! Almost as tall as me. I'm pretty short though, but she is a very, very big vanda. To find something like this at the flower shop is highly, highly unusual. That's why I wanted to get it because this is a very, very old vanda. I'm betting you it's maybe more than 15 years old because vandas need time to grow this large. I have young vandas already for three to four years not even reaching the size that normal vandas are sold in flower shops. Imagine this. This is a very old vanda 
and I just wanted to have it because as you guys know or maybe you do I did lose my blue Vanda a couple of years ago and I've always wanted another blue Vanda this is not the same thing it's not a Pachara but it looks very very pretty I think she's special and I just wanted to get it so I got it but now how will I grow it will I actually try to acclimate it to a pot heck nah no 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 I'm gonna do something else so not only is this a Vanda Vanda, but it's also a very old Vanda. If I try to put all of that stuff in a bucket at this point, there's no pot that can hold that. They're just gonna die completely. Will the orchid acclimate? Sure, I mean, I can wait for new roots to start to grow and do that. But this orchid is so tall and top heavy that keeping it in a pot is just gonna be very risky and not even very, very efficient. So I got a different trick up my sleeve. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it still bare rooted, but I got a trick that I didn't invent. Actually, Brad invented a few years back. He was one, if not the very first orchid channel at the time. He's not an orchid channel anymore that I watched. And I learned a lot of tips from him. If you wanna check him out, links below. He grows carnivorous plants now. Doesn't post all that frequently, but still you can find his older videos, which are wonderful and kinda got me started with YouTube. So one of the things he would do with these orchids to help with moisture, even though he had a proper greenhouse, was to wrap them in a plastic bag. Now, a few years ago, I did try this myself. I'll, I'm gonna try to find the video. Didn't work out, but I always thought, okay, I didn't apply the method properly. And I still think I didn't apply it properly. So I wanna try it again. Yes, I'm gonna keep this girl hanging, bare rooted. I'm not gonna try to pot it, but I'm gonna try to put a <laughs> bag on the roots. And this is a bag from the Vistro shelf that we recently installed. It is the perfect bag because it is the shape of a, of the roots. <laughs> okay. And also it has some perforations here and there which help with air movement. Great. But it is sealed at the bottom. So whatever water will drip at the bottom, it will not drip down. Hopefully, we're gonna see. If I need to cover some of these holes, I will use duct tape. It holds. So what I will do, and this will be a little funny, I will wrap the roots. Ta-da! How will I water it? Well, I have two options. I can still soak it. And this is something that you will see on my channel many, many years ago. When I used to live in Romania and climate was very different, I could get away with keeping my orchids hanging and I would just soak them in a bucket once a day in the summertime, once every few days in the winter, and I would be good. That technique does not work here. This climate is much different. But if I manage to, in between bucket waterings and soakings, keep the roots wet with the bag, I'll be happy. Additionally, what I can do, if I can find. So additionally, if the roots get a little bit dry in between these soaks, I can also spray them. There's no water here. Just imagine it really hard. I can also spray them and that moisture will still be kept in the bag. It will be very, very humid here for the roots. I can actually use fertilized water in the sprayer and just normal water in the bucket, you know, because I'm gonna waste a lot of fertilizer on her, obviously, because the bucket will be big as well. And I think I can pull it off. Now, obviously, many of you will not have to try this because many of you don't live in such a harsh climate as I do. It doesn't even rain here for more than half a year, but it is an idea that Brad invented. He did great with this solution in his greenhouse and he had beautiful Vandas. Like, I think I learned about Vandas from him. It was the first time that I saw a Vanda and he has beautiful Vandas. So I trust Brad a lot. And if I didn't make it work the first time, I think it was my mistake. Mistake. I think something went wrong in my approach, but this looks pretty legit, doesn't it? Not the prettiest, but it's gonna be functional because really I don't want to try to acclimate the sork. It is just not gonna happen. I might try in the future. I will have chances when new roots grow, but right now I know for a fact all of this will die off. I just know it. I'll keep you up to date with how this works long term, but I think it's a pretty nifty solution, at least for now, at least in winter time. We'll see about it in the summer. And most probably I will hang it there because it's the highest curtain rod that I have. If I hang it on that rod, yeah, it's, I don't think it's gonna fit. But there, 
I might be able to hang it. First of all though, I need to go to the home improvement store and find me a little chain or a little very, very sturdy string. Although I don't want strings because I'm not sure if the knot I will tie will hold. I need, yeah, I, I think I need a chain. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hang it because she's heavy. So anyway, that is about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope this will help you out with your vandas. Most of mine are okay. Most of mine are acclimated. And yes, I did have losses, very, 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 very few only with the bigger vandas. With the tinier, younger ones, I think it's pretty easy to acclimate them. And obviously, if you keep them that way, as they grow, they will just be acclimated to the pot situation. There will be an instance where you will need very big pots. But at the flower shop, I did find these guys, which are some sort of nursery pots. Very thin, not transparent, but you know, they do the trick. And at some point you will have quite a lot of roots outside of the pot. That is absolutely fine. You don't need to water all of them. You just need to water enough to properly hydrate the orchid. So it will be a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. If you can keep them bare-rooted without much hassle, if you have the time, yeah, it's the easiest thing to keep them bare-rooted. But if you don't have the time, you can try this. So anyway, that is about it on my little bagged baby. <laughs> I know some of you in the US can actually purchase so-called bag babies, bags of orchids. That sounds like a dream to me. I will never, ever have that in my stores. Try to comprehend that. I will never, ever have an orchid nursery in my country and I will never, ever have bag babies in the shops. Nice thoughts to live with, right? <laughs> anyway, kidding. Uh, but I have a bag baby of my own, so I'll keep you up to date. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and listening to me blab. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.